right, this is Season 2, Episode 4, Portrait Artist of the Year, and I just want to explain once again that each one of these episodes will have 12 painters and 3 models. From those 12 painters, they will select 3 semi-finalists, and then finally one person to go on to the finals. Let's get started. So let's take a look at the models. There are three celebrity models, and each model has four people painting them. From this particular episode, three people will be chosen as semi-finalists for this episode, and only one will be chosen to go on to the official semi-finals of the entire program. So each one of these models is a celebrity. Remember, this is a program that's coming from England, so they're much better known on the BBC. The first one's name is Greg Davies. I know him as a comedian and on a program called The Cleaner, which I think he writes and acts in, which is about a person who cleans up crime scenes. <laughs> it's kind of gross in some ways, but it's not explicit in any way. And it every time he goes to clean up a crime scene, some hilarity ensues. So that is who Greg Dav Davies is. He is a very, very tall man. The next one's name is Non Evans. I don't know what she's known for. Obviously something athletic. Her physique is, well, exactly like mine, of course. She is quite chiseled. I did find the amount of makeup that she wore difficult. That It would be very hard for me to read her eyes because of all the makeup around them. But we'll see how they try and deal with that. The next person's name is Adi Ademshian and he is an athlete. He's also a scholar and learner. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but one thing about him which makes his physique different is he is in a wheelchair, and so he his legs are slightly different than they would be if he was not in a wheelchair. All right, now let's look at the settings. Now the settings, each one of the judges gets to make the setting. This is where they show their creativity. And it's supposed to show something about each one of the models in some way or some conceptual thing. Sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. The first one is for Greg Davies. I, this was supposed to have something to do with um, that he is preparing for a role. He's lying down on a couch, he's got some cigarettes nearby and some cans of soda and whatnot, but was supposed to be juxtaposed yeah, with the outdoors and the expanse of his life in some way. You know, sometimes when the explanation goes on for a really, really long time, my eyes start to roll and I start thinking, well, you had fun figuring this out, but really put the man on a couch and get on with it. However, he did speak about how he did not want to be portrayed with any kind of weight problem. He is probably six foot five or something. I don't know what he was talking about, but actors tend to say something about their appearance. Obviously, they're very aware of their appearance because they see it on film all the time. So that is Greg Davies' setting. The next one up is Nan Evans, and she was placed on a concrete slab, which was a pedestal, to be fair, with the concrete color behind her. The idea behind this conceptually was that she's so chiseled that she's almost a sculpture herself. I agree with that concept. It looks like a very uncomfortable pose, but that is what they did. So that is non. And the next is a D. Now with a D, he was in a very complex setting and it was supposed to show that he is not only an athlete, but also a advocate for other people and causes, that he's a scholar, I guess he's known for some writings or commentary of some kind, so therefore they put in the globe. Interesting. I do like the skin color and the color of his shirt against that teal color behind him. I can see where that bec could become a very juicy and intriguing contrast. So I like that. I don't know if they tell the models what to wear or not. I, I suspect that they don't. This, whole, this program all seems a little loosey-goosey to me, but, but somehow they pull it together. More on this program than the landscape one. Now I just want you to get an idea of what one-third of the stage looks like. So this is Non and the four painters about to reveal what they did so that she can pick one to take home. Each 
model picks one painting to take home. That has nothing to do with the final judging. So now we're going to look at the reveal and see each individual painting for model one, who is non, and we will take a look at which one she decides to take home. All right, this is definitely an island surrounded by oceans painting. <laughs> I want her anchored in. I want that figure to be anchored in in some way. I want her sitting on something. It, it doesn't have to be completely done. Just give me a line or two, but I don't like that she's just sitting there. Uh, this particular artist was hampered by the amount of time because the self-portrait that brought him to this program took months to do, and he is working in pencil. So he's a very careful, very good draftsman, but this didn't speak to his best skill set. The next one I found um, odd. There's just nothing I can say about it, but that it's odd. I don't think that a portrait has to look exactly like the person, but you have to get some kind of feeling that you've captured either the personality of the person or certainly the life within. And this just doesn't have that for me. There's no light in the eyes. There's no there's no modeling of the features. Everything is very, very muddy. It just doesn't speak to my taste and, and, and stiff. So I don't have a lot to say about this one. The judges all felt that each one of the people who was painting Nan was very intimidated by her physique, which could be true. I, I don't know. The next one, this woman had so much confidence that I would like, if I could buy something, I would like to buy a cup of her confidence. She was convinced she was going to win the whole program, not just this episode. Uh, she, I think she got a likeness. I don't like the format that she picked. I think the canvas is, seems a little too long and a little too high if you're going to do nothing with the background. So good job on anchoring it in, but I would have picked up a, a red brush and probably some blue and dug some, some big swaths behind her because the figure has life in it, but the background seems very uh, open and vague. There's just, there's just so much more that could be done. And I know we're not talking about time here. I think we're talking about a difference in taste. Maybe she liked the purity of what was happening. She is, she is a professional artist. Some of these people are amateurs. Some of them are professionals. She was clearly and stated that she was a professional and she uh, really could not believe that she did not win, but she did not win, uh, but that's giving away the spoilers even before, before the spoilers begin. So remember, there are three artists for each model. This is the fourth, and I think they did a good job. Uh, it certainly looks like non, and I do wish they had, there's some cropping that I would have done. I know it's unfinished, but you sure don't want to crop it off below the knee there. You never want someone to look like an amputee. Again, time constraints. If I was there, I have no idea what I would do. Now, each one of the models gets to pick one painting to take home. Non chose this one, I suspect, because it enhances her body so much, which is, you know, something she's rightly very, very proud of. It's certainly not the painting I would have picked. But I did think that this particular grouping was probably not the strongest. I mean, out of all the episodes we've seen, this was not a particularly strong showing with this, this model. The reasons for that, unclear for me. You know, this program has a lot of highs and lows. Some really, really great painting and then followed by some inexplicable choices. But this is one that goes home with Lenon, but not the one selected by the judges. Now let's look at the results for model number two. Now model number two is Adi. And I wanted you to also get a look of what Adi looks like before he gets out of his wheelchair and is put in the setting. I think that's somewhat important because his physique is just not the normal proportions that you would see if you were studying from a figure book. Not that that matters necessarily in this particular program, but when we do see, uh, I think there's at least one picture where someone considered the whole entire body, and you could think that maybe there had been some mistakes made in the representation, but there weren't. He has a very unique uh, body structure, uh, because of his disability, is my guess. So the first one up from the reveal on Adi was someone that took on the whole setting, the globe, the chair, the background. I really like this painting. I really have a heart for this painting. I, I just, 
look at what's going on in the background. They're using a lot of different colors and letting them blend in together. The drawing is really, really, really good. I don't know that they got a likeness, but in this case, you see, I don't think that matters because you get a sense of the person sitting in the space, a sense of that the particular time, and the person looks like they're alive. So I, I really liked this one. And well, again, the judges are not necessarily looking for good painting. They're looking for something different. I said that over and over again. And the next one provides that for them. The next one is definitely different. And of course, they respond to that. We're going to talk about this one, the one that's coming up briefly, and then we'll talk about it some more later. So this was a more close-up picture of a D, and this particular artist takes, yes, you're not going to believe this, but this is true, they take melted wax and pour it or drip it over the canvas. Never heard of this before. And then they grid the painting and then they go ahead and paint. So you get this kind of weird, if you look closely, you can see there's like, um, there's, uh, what do you call it? Forms, forms that are made by the wax. It must be an incredibly tedious process. I've never heard of it before. But remember, the judges are looking for something different. And so I think this is something that they're going to latch onto. If you've watched this program enough, you kind of get to know what their preferences might be. It's a really good likeness and a really, a really fine painting. So I think this needs to be considered. He did not, even though this is, yeah, this is the reveal. So he didn't get involved in the shirt in any way. I don't, I don't know why. I, I would have just made that a flat red, and I think that would have worked just fine. This is the next person uh, who is in consideration by a D. Remember, he gets to take one home. I really enjoyed this one. This is probably the one that, if I was painting, I would have painted something similar to this. I mean, this is how I would have composed the painting, is my what I suspect. I'm really pumped up the, sh the red in the shirt, pumped up the color behind. I would have had him placed on something. See how it's not islands surrounded by oceans because those shoulders take up so much space and the chair goes off the top. So you get a good sense of composition going on here. The next one looks the most like watercolor of any of the participants. There was not a watercolorist in this heat. I think so far in this whole program, there's been one for this particular season. I hope that changes someday. But anyway, doesn't this look a lot like a watercolor portrait? It, it really does to me. Remember, they had four hours. Certainly, I think got a likeness. And I like what he did when it came to just the essentials, figuring out what were the essential parts that needed to be emphasized using a lot of the natural, I don't want to say natural color of the paper, but you can see the layers being applied and decisions being made. I kind of like that when you can see when an art, what the artist's decisions were. I guess I'm, I'm always more interested in process than I am in the final piece. Anyway, that's me. Now, remember, Adi picks one to go home with him, and this is the one that he chose. And I think he picked a really nice painting. You know, that's what I'm looking for. Not just a portrait, not just a likeness, but a painting that will work as a painting if you put it in anybody's home, not just in the home of the person that it resembles. All right, time for a reveal for model number three. This is Greg Davies. And in a minute, I'm going to show you that moment. It's this is the most exciting moment of the program when the model gets to see the four artists turn their canvases around. And they're always so delighted to see what the artists have done because they haven't had a chance to sneak and, and take a look. So I, I do like this particular moment. So here they are. They've turned them around. And he's getting his first look at the four and remember, the judges will make their own decisions, but he gets to pick one to go home with him. All the people worked in a, I wouldn't say large format, but certainly nothing as tiny as, as the little sketch we saw before. So here's the first person up. Definitely enhance the color. And by that, I mean use color value swap outs. So, for example, you know on, the, on his forehead, on the right-hand side of his forehead, there was no green mark there. But if you pick a, picture, a color that has the same value as the skin tone, you can insert a color value swap out and make a patch of any color you want to, as long as it stays within that sort of value frame. 
and that can enhance the color and also kind of is reflective of what was behind him because any object when it's surrounded by things is going to pick up some of the colors that are around it. So I thought he, the person was a, a good colorist when it came to that because otherwise the whole setting was somewhat monochrome except for the background of the birch trees. The next one up was fascinating to watch if you watch the program because she had a likeness from minute one. She was working in the largest format of the four people who did paint Greg, and then she lost the likeness. Several people did in this particular heat uh, working on, on Greg. There were lots of wipeouts because they didn't, uh, I don't mean that they fell down. <laughs> what I mean is because they're working in oil or acrylic, they can wipe out what they did and redo it, which is not an option for us watercolorists. But in the end, I think she had the likeness and then she lost it. And as time went on, the image became hardened. And that happens to me over and over again. I can't tell you how many times I, I start, I, I have a pretty good painting and then especially a portrait. And I think, okay, that's pretty good. Now you should walk away. And if I don't, it tends to harden into stone. And suddenly I look at it and I thought, oh, you lost the life. This is the one that I personally like the best. They used a palette knife. They also used brushes. It has a freeness. The birch, birch trees are implied. Love the composition. And the figure looks relaxed. It's really hard to make a figure look relaxed. Uh, does she have a likeness? Well, I think so. Um, but I, I don't remember if the judges had a lot to say about this painting. It was also a little bit larger than is portrayed here and showed a little bit of bulge of his stomach, which he said he didn't like. Not that he has a bulge on his stomach. He doesn't. He's just a person in repose. You know, when you get in repose, you're going to have lumps and bumps. That's just, that's the, just the human form. And so, so let's see what happens with the, the next contestant. Remember, there are four artists for each heat. So we've seen three. One was a colorist, one turned him into stone, and then this one, this is the fourth one. I, I like this one too. Certainly unfinished, but you get a sense of the space and the place. Now that I look at it more, I don't think it's as strong as the one we just saw. And I don't remember, I don't remember them saying much about it. The judges tend to either say a lot about something or nothing. So... I, I, um, this is probably too conventional for them. Remember, they're looking for something different. They come right out and say they're looking for something different. This is a pretty conventional painting by our modern standards. Now, remember that Greg gets to pick one to take home. This is the one he chose, the one that has color value swap outs in it. I would have chosen this one too. It had a lot of life in it. I think it would look great in any setting, which is sort of my criterion for what painting I would want in my house. Not one that necessarily looked like me, but one that was a good painting, just based on its own merits. Now the winners are the reveal of the semifinalists. Remember, three people are going to go on to what they call the semifinals. And there will be seven people in semifinals because there have been, in the end, there will have been seven episodes. And that means that seven finalists will be at the semifinals, and from them, they will pick three people. From those three people, they will end up picking only one who will then have a commission to complete, which is a portrait of the actor, Alan Cummings, which is, that's a big project. So the first one that the judges chose, and I put the little insert of, of the close-up of the faces, but we saw it earlier with the color value swap out, this is the first one they picked, Greg Davis, Davies, excuse me. So this is one of the ones that they're picking as one of the three finalists of the day. But remember, only one person is going to go forward. I, they weren't as enamored with the color spots of value as I am. They don't like things that are not really resolved. Although I've seen them do both. I've seen them praise some things that aren't resolved completely and then shut down when something is too resolved. So I can never get a handle on where the judges are, which is why I could never be a judge because I would give everyone a prize. <laughs> because 
because <laughs> they showed up. That's enough. This was my favorite. I suspect that the person did it from a photograph because they were considerably far away. But I, this is exactly the kind of composition that I would have chosen. Just a, not just the face, but enough to anchor in the rest of the body and provide a, a sense of the space and the place and the person. So this was the second semifinalist of the day. And now let's get to the third semifinalist of the day. All right, the third semifinalist of the day. Yes, you guessed it. They picked the drippy wax guy. And you can see his self-portrait behind. Now that self-portrait he got to spend a lot of time on. And if you could see it really close up, it's done with pointillism. So each individual piece of paint is dropped in, similar to Surratt. And, um, you know, it's a technique that he's developed and it is unusual and very effective. So the judges very much like this painting, which gave me a hint that he's probably going to win this. There the judges are talking about the painting. Again, not only about his process, but about the final piece. I do think he nailed the likeness, and he certainly, he followed the brief. He, he deserves to win if he does indeed win. All right, and the winner is, dun, 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 dun. I don't think you're going to be surprised. Spoilers ahead. The winner is indeed the fellow who used the wax. Again, I think it's because they're looking for an accomplished painter, but also someone who's doing something different. Here's a close-up. Now this is only pixelated to a to a, a little of what he normally would do. As he said, he would have done really tiny, tiny dots if he had had the time. But I sh you can see what a color swap out can do there. That skin is, is not skin colored. Skin is all different kinds of colors. Here he is again, looking at the painting as they're talking about it and his self-portrait that's behind. He is a very accomplished painter, so I, I don't disagree with their result at all. So he's going to go on to the semifinals where there will be seven people. From those seven, they will pick three. Those three will paint Ian McKellen, the actor, and from those three, only one will be chosen to go and do the final commission, which is of actor Alan Cummings. So we are, this was episode four, which means five, six. So there are three more episodes to go before we get to the finals. And I've already, hashtag Joe is always right, which I'm not, but I've already think I know who the winner is going to be. But I'm, I'm curious to see what this guy does. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.